Ave Maria. Dearly beloved, Christ died once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Put to death indeed in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit, in which also he went and preached to those spirits that were in prison. These in times past had been disobedient, when the patience of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was building. In that ark a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. Its counterpart, baptism, now saves you also, not in putting off of the filth of the flesh, but the inquiry of a good conscience after God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, who is at the right hand of God. Saint Peter, writing in his first letter, it tells us that Christ died once for sin. <clears throat> it is the case of the just for the unjust, the innocent for the guilty. And the purpose of his death was, in fact, to lead us to God. He might bring us to God. So the death of Christ is for our justification, his resurrection for our sanctification. The apostle goes on to say that he was put to death in the flesh, but in the spirit he was alive. And so we understand from this that we are composed of two parts, the, the flesh and the soul. In the case of Christ, this was joined to the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Son of God. In other words, the second person of the Blessed Trinity took human flesh and he had a human soul and in the unity of his person. Two natures in one person. We call that the hypostatic union. And in the litany of the Sacred Heart, we say, Heart of Jesus, hypostatically united to the Word of God. So we mean simply by this that there's one person in Christ, not two. There are two natures in Christ, not one. When we die, our soul departs from the body. And so effectively, our body is dead, but our soul certainly is alive. It is in our souls that we go to judgment. If we die in a state of grace, that is, we have no mortal sin on our souls, then we are effectively saved. It does not mean that we go directly to heaven. For that to happen, certain other conditions need to be satisfied. If we die in a state of grace and either we have venial sins, we are attached to these sins, or we have punishment due to mortal sins that have been forgiven, we are detained for a time in purgatory, and there occurs the purification. After the purification, then we enter into heaven. So, in effect, those who, who die in a state of grace, that is, with no mortal sins, are saved. If we die in a state of mortal sin, then we have effectively rejected God and we are damned, lost for all eternity. So then for the Christian who is striving for holiness, death is not something to be feared, but rather it's a time of hope for us. We know that we will see the one whom we are trying to serve in this world. And even if our entrance into heaven is delayed, we know that we will in the end see him, and as Job says, we will see him in our very flesh. In the death of Christ, his soul left his body, so the body was in the tomb. And Saint Peter tells us that in the spirit, in his soul, he descended into the underworld. In the creed, we say he descended into hell. But we need to understand what is meant by hell. Hell is simply an anglicized form of the Latin word, the infernum, the underworld, which in the Hebrew was referred to as Sheol. Now, Sheol, the underworld, is divided into 
several parts. We're talking about the time before Christ's death. It consisted essentially of the hell of the angels, of the demons, and of those who had died in mortal sin. That is in the lower part. Christ did not go down there. Then there, is, there was the place called the, the bosom of, Adam, of Abraham, or the um, limbo, or the limbo of the fathers. This was the place that Christ went, because there were detained the saints of all, the, those who had been trying to serve God in this world. And they had been detained because heaven was shut because of Adam's sin. It re- would require Christ to open up heaven. So in this limbo, in, in this place, um, Abraham's bosom, were detained Adam. He certainly had reason to repent of his sin, and he knew what he had done. And the other, the other patriarchs, so we have Abraham, of course, and Jacob, and Isaac, David, and so on. And that didn't, that wasn't just Jews. It was, in fact, anybody and everybody who had been trying to live as best they could a just life in this world. So Christ went to this place, we're told, and with, by St. Peter. And we're told he preached, he went and preached to those spirits that were in prison. So obviously these people were conscious, otherwise you can't preach to them. So they knew, they were aware of where they were and why they were there, and they were also looking forward to the coming of the Redeemer. Now, in preaching to them, he was declaring to them the good news that he had died and that heaven was now opened. St. Peter goes on to say, describe these people who were in prison. These, in times past, had been disobedient when the patience of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. So one of the things that's interesting, up to the time of Noah, there was no idolatry because all, everyone, was aware that there was one God. It's only after this, with the building of the Tower of Babel, that we find idolatry creeping in. But up to that time, everybody believed in the one God. So Noah was building the ark, took him a hundred years, and he was being mocked and ridiculed, because one, he was building in the middle of land, two, because no one ever dreamed there could be such a flood as to cause the, the, the disaster that it did. And of course, three, God had never punished before to that extent. And so they were mocking him. But we're told in that ark, a few, that is eight people, were saved through water. And now St. Peter is going to connect this to our own time because there is a new Noah, Christ, that he's building a new ark, the church. And it is within the church that the symbolic eight will be saved. That is those who believe. And so he calls it its counterpart. The counterpart of the ark of Noah was baptism. And so baptism, we enter through baptism, we enter into the church, into the ark, into the ark of Christ, into his mystical body. And it is in there, within the ark, that we are saved. And just as in the ark there were all kinds of animals, clean as well as unclean, so likewise in the church we have saints as well as sinners. So we strive within the church, within the ark of Christ, to be saints, so that we indeed might be saved on the last day. And St. Peter says, then it is through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, who is at the right hand of God that we are saved. And therefore, within the church, we work out, as St. Paul counsels us, our salvation with fear and trembling, believing that Christ Jesus has died for us and that he has risen and he reigns even today at the right hand of God, while all the time assisting us as he promised in the gospel, that he's with us until the end of time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Santa Maria Mater.